Today, I'm going to answer the question, what is fermentation and what does it look like? Let's get started. All right, so maybe you are on your first homebrew ever. You're making a beer or a hard seltzer or a wine or a mead. And you're asking the question, um, is my brew fermenting? Uh, if you've watched many YouTube videos, most people say, including myself, look for the bubbling, which is true. So please don't hear me say that that's wrong. What I am saying is that we got to get a little more specific. So the first thing we have to talk about is what is fermentation? Fermentation is simply the conversion of sugar into alcohol by yeast. Now, fermentation only happens when there is yeast present. And that could be wild yeast, that could be a, a yeast you've bought at the store, anything like that. So your yeast, simply, it gets more sciencey than this, but they, can, they take whatever sugar they have, they convert it into alcohol, and then and a byproduct of that is what we call, or you know as, CO2. And that CO2 is what causes the bubbling and uh, the weird looking fermentation process. So when people talk about looking for the bubbling, they're talking about looking for the CO2, which is the byproduct of the yeast. So there's a couple things um, and a couple ways you can know if your brew is fermenting. The biggest one is your airlock. So if you have, you, there are lots of different options for airlocks if you are fermenting. Um, these are two right here, this is a three piece airlock and this is a S airlock. Um, these two require some liquid. Most of the time you use a, a sanitized water of sort and or you might use some kind of cheap, had it somewhere, cheap vodka or cheap sort of hard, or hard, cheap spirit. Not hard spirit, all spirits are hard. Um, you put that in there and you'll see bubbling. So here's an example of what a three piece airlock looks like when it's bubbling. This little inner tube essentially just blurps up and it allows for um, nothing to get into the brew. These are nice because you can clean them super easily. Here's what an S airlock looks like when it's fermenting. Um, there's the one side that the oxygen, or excuse me, CO2 goes into and then it comes out. These are great for long-term aging because they don't evaporate as quickly. The S, or excuse me, the three-piece airlocks evaporate more quickly. Um, the third option is the silicone bre uh, breathable bungs, which essentially don't require any uh, water or anything. They are waterless, so they just expel CO2 when it builds up enough. So you might see something on the top of your airlock or in your airlock bubbling. That normally means that there's some fermentation going on or it alternatively could mean that the brew is degassing, and we'll unpack that here in a second. Now, when you're looking physically at your brew with your eyes, you might see a couple different things. Normally, you can look close enough into that brew and see some bubbling action of sorts. So here's a couple examples of um, some yeast in action that are fermenting, that are bubbling their way, um, or expelling CO2, I should say. This means that they are actively doing one of two things, either fermenting or they are degassing. When you see those bubbles, the CO2 bubbles slow down or halt completely, normally that means both of those processes are done and you're done with fermentation. Lots of people will say when you see your airlock slow down to like a bubble every 45 seconds to a minute, that normally means that it's done going through its fermentation process. Essentially, what I look for most of the time, at least in my own world, is I look for the clearing of the brew. Once things stop fermenting, the activity within the brew slows down and you'll see it start to clear up. Now, it's easy when you're looking at glass, but when you're in a bucket, it's a little bit harder. You can look at the top of the brew and see the bubbles rising. You can also see it become less murky as it gets close to the end. So that's how you can tell with a bucket. Um, that you can't see the side. What do I mean by the difference between degassing and fermenting? Fermenting is that main activity point where the sugars are still being um, converted and that CO2 is at its maximum point. It's just churning out and out and out. Once the yeast are through your sugars, they 
normally have a little bit of like built up pressure or CO2 to expel. And so what you'll find is that it takes a little bit for that CO2 to leave all of the yeast. So even if your brew finished, you could still see some activity. So how do you really know the difference between the two? Well, most of the time you just let it clear up and that whole process is done. I normally don't rack a brew over until I see it clear up somewhat, because if you rack too early, you're likely to take your brew off of the yeast colony it's on, and if you rack before it's done fermenting, there's a chance that those yeast might stress out towards the end of it and not finish fermenting. So don't rack too early. So here's, there's one tool that will literally fix all of your problems, and every good home brewer has this tool. And I'm saying that to you right now. If you want to be a good home brewer, you will have this tool, a hydrometer. Now, what is a hydrometer? A hydrometer is a measuring, is a alcohol measuring tool. You use this thing to measure the specific gravity um, of a brew. Now, what's important, or, or the bricks scale, it's a whole, that's a whole nother system, but essentially you're measuring what the potential alcohol by volume a brew is. So whenever you start your brew, you float your hydrometer in a vessel of sort that's tall enough to let it float and you record where it lands. So let's say my brew started at 1.090. How I will know that my brew is actually done fermenting is by taking a gravity reading later on. When that gravity reading stays the same for let's say at least seven to 10 days, now that's a long time and some people are gonna fight me on that, but that's a fair amount of time. Seven to 10 days, that means your, your brew is normally done fermenting. So let's say I started at 1.090, uh, 20 days goes by for my wine I'm making and I take another gravity reading and it's at 1.005. I take another gravity reading five days later, six days later, 1.005, that thing's probably done fermenting. But if you see the gravity continuing to change, it's probably still fermenting. So this is your number one tool. You are a, going to be a good successful mead or wine or beer or cider maker if you use this. If you don't use one of these, you might be successful, but you will likely have some hardships ahead of you. So that's kind of what fermentation looks like. And it's most of the time um, in conjunction with watching bubbles. So as you are fermenting, watch your bubbles, watch your airlocks, see if they slow down, get a hydrometer, measure some gravity readings. Basically, be patient, <laughs> let your yeast do their thing, take care of them, give them nutrients if they need them, do all of that stuff, but go make a brew. Go get your proper equipment and good luck fermenting. Cheers.